Uh, I hope you all are doing correct. Uh, so uh, it's, it's been a while uh, since our last webinar. So it's good to be back uh, with a new webinar. So the today's agenda for our webinar is a backup and restore solution for both cluster with Stash. So uh, I'm assuming you guys are already familiar with Stash, but if you're not, so Stash is a backup and restore solution by AppSport. So, uh, um, so, so every solution of Stash in terms of different databases acts as an add-on. So essentially, a uh, solution for Vault Server using Stash is basically an add-on, which should be uh, up uh, within the next release, uh, which should be pretty soon. So with that, uh, let's jump right into the webinar. So here is the table of contents of our today's webinar. Uh, so at first, uh, I'm going to show you how you can install default and also how you can install stash enterprise operator after that uh, i'm going to uh, show some sort of workarounds and some sort of workflow in terms of how vault can be uh, can be backed up and also how it can be restored uh, how the workflow works in terms of uh, vault sop and then i'm going to deploy the vault server then i'm going to demonstrate how you can take Vault backup and also how you can restore Vault Server in some different scenarios. So here is the command to install our default operator. We uh, last day we had a new release of this operator. So with this release, we are basically introducing that default uh, backup and restore solution. So if you want to have this sort of uh, this sort of mechanism for backing up your Vault cluster, you should install this version. And uh, this is the installation command for Stash operator. Uh, this is our last uh, last version command, I believe. So uh, when the new version will be available, you should uh, use that one for installing the command, which should be available in our website, stash.com. So before deploying the Vault Server, uh, here are some sort of CRDs. Uh, I'm sure you guys are already familiar with, uh, with this sort of CRDs. So the first thing is issuer. So in terms of our Vault Server, we are going to deploy a SART Manager Manage TLS. Uh, with that, we will need an issuer. So for that, we'll need basically create a secret, which is Vault C that I've already created. I will show you in a while. And I have given the issuer name and the namespace. And here is the most important part, uh, probably, uh, the Vault Server YAML here. So it's our same old, old Vault Server, nothing much new here in terms of uh, the YAML, how it goes. So we are using the key for Beyond Alpha 2 version. So kind of you can see here is Vault Server. I provided the name and the namespace, and I'm using the latest Vault version 1.2.3. I'll be deploying three replicas. So there will be three ports of Vault Server. So we are using the SART Manager Managed TLS here. So I have provided the issuer of the data I'm going to create in the TLS section. And uh, as you're already familiar with the alert secret engine field, so it basically enables different sort of secret engines uh, allow mechanism. So whether you can allow uh, different namespaces or different types of secret engines to it. So uh, I'm going to draw your focus to this part actually. So Vault actually supports numerous backend storage, for example, Graph, Console, JCS, AWS, and different sort of databases also. And also it can be run as in mem But uh, what special about Raft is uh, you get uh, out of the box uh, many opportunities with Raft, which also provides you the high availability. And our Vault backup and restore solution uh, for the time being works fluently with Raft storage backend. Vault has uh, certain guidelines how you can take backup and restore snapshots in your vault cluster using the rough storage backend. So if you want to use the vault backup and restore solution, your backend must be raft. So raft is very easy to configure. You will just need to provide the storage section here. So I provided the storage class name and I have allocated some resources. And ancillary mode. So ancillary mode, uh, if you think it very simply, so what it does is, so if you want to deploy a particular vault server, it will come up with some sort of ancillary keys and root token, right? So you want to, save them in some sort of store where they will be stored very separately since those are very sensitive information. So ancillary spec basically lets you define the backend where you want to store all your credentials. 
and the number of credentials will be generated or the number of credentials that will be required to unseal the ball server will be also defined here in the secret special field. And as the ancillary mode, I am using Google KMS GCS. So obviously, I will need to provide the relevant information of the packet that I'm using here. And to connect to the packet, to authenticate to the packet, I'm going to use a credential, which is called GCP credit. So I'm referring it here in the credential secret credit part. And also, I have enabled monitor, monitor, monitor uh, as Prometheus monitoring and dimension policy I've set to wipe out. So whenever I delete the ball server, it will also delete the associated resources that Vault has created, also the secrets and secrets and the token also. So with that, I think uh, we are good to go with deploying the ball server. So first thing first, let's uh, deploy our ball server. So I have already created the secret that will be required for our ball server deployment. So I already have the GCP credential to connect to my ancillary backend, and also I have created a ball CA. With that ball CA, the issuer YAML that I have showed, I have also created an vault issuer, which is ready. So uh, using those, uh, now let's deploy our ball server. <clears throat> so in this part here, I'm going to watch my ball server box. And I will also uh, share what are the other parts here that I'm going to watch here in a moment. So now for the time being, let's focus on the ball server that's covered. Uh, data. So let's also check out the ball server status here. So it's currently in initializing state. So we want to wait until the ball server is ready. So uh, because you, if you want to get the backup snapshot or even you want to restore it, the ball server must be initialized and unsealed. So according to our CRT definition, so it must be in a ready state if you want to restore backup or any other thing. So now we already have one pod up, uh, two more to go. So ball server is currently in a critical state. Let's wait a bit more. So our, all the ports will be back up. So the ancillary keys will, should be stored where we have provided uh, the location here. So this is the bucket uh, of the location that I have provided. So I can see my fault token and all answer keys are already stored here. So this is the place. Uh, remember this one because we are going to need it uh, whenever we want to uh, restore it in another wall server. So now uh, let's wait for the wall server to be ready. So two pod is up, now wall server is trying to get ready. So what it does is uh, whenever uh, we do some sort of write check in our wall server, so vault server internally, we do a read write check in a particular KVC credential that we enable from our operator end. So whenever it is able to read or write to our vault server, it should show the status as ready. So currently vault server is ready. So now let's take a look at the vault server secret engines that are currently available. So uh, using the Kubel CLI, I can actually easily manage or take a look or list my unseen keys and vault token. Uh, without any fuss. So let's let, let me export the vault token with this very simple command. Uh, I'm sure you are familiar with this command as I as we have shown these commands in our uh, previous webinars, which is also available in our webinar website. So you can also watch it from there. So, uh, let me export the vault address and also the vault CSR. So now let's go for from the ball to just take a look at the ball secret list. So uh, th this is the KV secret engine uh, that I'm I was talking about in terms of our health check. Okay, so we have successfully deployed a ball server. So what's next? So now basically what we want to do, we want to essentially write some data into our ball server, then probably get the backup of the data, and then probably check some disaster scenarios, right? So yeah, so how in terms of vault or in terms of the stash add-ons that we've recently added, how does that work? So let's get around it first. So let's take a look at the workflow that actually happens whenever we deploy a vault. So now uh, let's say I have the stash operator, uh, enterprise operator already deployed and I have my key vault already deployed here, right? 
So whenever uh, I deploy a particular ball server, it comes up with a set of ANSI keys and root token that I want to show you guys. And these ANSI keys and root token are just for this particular ball server. So its identity is associated with this ball server. No other ball server has this identity of these ANSI keys and root token. So whenever we deploy a particular ball server, it comes up with an unique set of ANSI keys and root token. And what it did after that, we stored them in a secret way in the GCS bucket in our game store, right? So now, uh, if I want to uh, read or write some data into Vault, we know Vault has many different secret engines from database secret engines, from different clouds secret engines, and uh, of course, the KB secret engines. So KB secret engines is the only secret engines that can actually read or write data. So to store some sort of secrets, you should actually use these KB secret engines. Other secret engines are mainly used for like uh, generating dynamic credentials or probably encrypting some sort of certificates or generating certificates, etc. So let's say I have enabled a KB secret engine. I have write some data, my very secret data in this particular secret engine. And also, after that, what? So to run a production grade ball server that you can do with Evolved, you should always ensure that your secret data is secured and they are, of course, uh, taken care of as the, uh, the backup solution, right? So let's say uh, using the stash, uh, I have also taken a particular snapshot of this particular ball server after writing some data. And this snapshot will be written in some sort of, let's say, a snapshot store where, where all my snapshot will be stored right, in a very safe place. So uh, there are two different scenarios that can occur in our case that we're dealing with. So the first thing, uh, let me go through it first. So it can happen that the secret engines, uh, let's say you have not one, you have many different secret engines you have enabled in different parts and you have many different secrets that are written in different secret engines. So let's say uh, or maybe one or all of your secret engines have been deleted for some reason. Uh, maybe someone new from your organization have deleted them mistakenly. So what's next? So now, the website or some resources that you are handling or taking data from your ball cluster maybe are maybe down. So in terms of that, what can you do? So you can do what you can do. You can run a simple restore snapshot command, and we can get back from that particular snapshot. You can define it which snapshot that you want. If it's the latest or which snapshot that you want, and you will get the KV secret engines and all the associated data back. So this is the first sort of simple scenario that any disaster can happen. Anyone can delete any KV sort of secret engines right accidentally. It, it happened to all of us. So what are the another example, right? So another thing that can happen, let's say you have a vault server, but now your vault server itself is deleted, right? So it's a disaster scenario, right? Your vault server itself is gone and all the associated ANSI keys and root token are also gone. That's for some reason. So what you want to do, you have some very important data that are encrypted and stored in this particular snapshot, in a snapshot store. You want to, uh, you want to get them back. So what you can do, so practically, or essentially you should deploy a new wall server, right? So you have a vanilla wall server deployed again. So if we deploy a particular wall server, you will get some ANSI keys and root token associated with this particular wall server only. And we're going to store them in a game store, right? That's our flow. So now, if you want to restore this particular snapshot from a different particular ball server to a new ball server, right? So what can happen? So we are trying to restore a particular snapshot and it's going to restore that particular snapshot. But in terms of vault, it's not simply going to restore your snapshot. Why? Because the ANSI keys actually has a signature in the snapshot that we have taken earlier from the old wall server. So it will not allow you to simply uh, restore the snapshot. So you can bypass it through some ways. So you can apply force to restore that uh, snapshot into the new wall server. And also now what happens now, that's the most interesting part. So you already have a set of ANSI keys and root token with this particular wall server stored in a game store. Now, what have you done? You have restored a snapshot from a different wall server into this wall server. And you have done it forcefully. So here is the interesting part. So what happens now, these ANSI keys and root token have become obsolete. These are not valid anymore. So you essentially need the ANSI keys and root token associated with the old vault server that was the snapshot taken off. 
so now we need to do in some way to sync up this particular secret engines so uh, 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 secret keys and secret keys and root token again so of course if we do it successfully all our secret data our secret engines will be back but somehow we'll need a mechanism to get the sync uh, old and keys and root token and sync them to the new store where it will be expected to get it from there so for that we had actually decided to also store the ANSI keys and root token that are that is associated with the vault server along with the vault snapshot, so that our vault server backup and store solution will be complete. So uh, the, the, there might be one catch that might, you might be worried about. So uh, if you think about stash, so stash uses restic, restic uses some sort of encryption which also requires a secret key. So without that, you will not be able to get uh, anything from the data. So that secret key becomes very important in that case. So your restricted secret is very crucial in that case, as we are storing the ANSI keys and root token along with that snapshot. Mm -hmm. So I hope oh, that made some sense. So here is the demo time. Here is the fun part, uh, done with all the talking, I believe. Uh, but uh, before doing the demo, uh, I am going to shoot you with some CRDs. Hold on with me. So here are some CRDs uh, that are actually associated with our stash uh, operator. So uh, uh, you can of course read about what are those CRDs do and what are different uh, configuration parameters in the specification section. In the stash has a very nice uh, documentation about it in our stash website. Uh, I'm just going to give you a practical example how I see as a key vault developer when I started working with stash, right? So uh, repository basically the part, the backend where you want to store your snapshots. So let's say it can be anything. It can be GCS, it can be S3 bucket, it can be anywhere, right? So of course, if you want to connect to some sort of cloud, if you want to store something there, then you must give some sort of permissions or some sort of credentials to connect to that. So it will need a storage secret, of course, the bucket and the prefix where you want to uh, store them. So repository is basically the backend where you want to store your snapshots from the vault that you are taking globally. And now, uh, so repository response, right? Now think about function and task and not just about backup function and task. So function and task, uh, if we can generalize it in a bit, then I think backup function and restore function are pretty much the same thing, right? So function is basically what it does. Let's say you have a particular function that does some task for you. And task is basically a set of functions. You can associate with it. One or more function will have task. So for a vault server, uh, let's say uh, for a vault server backup, you want to provide some sort of parameters, some sort of directory, some sort of configurations. You can pass it through a backup function. And as you can see, I'm using uh, an image that, that actually uh, belongs to me, my repo. So after our stash enterprise operator is released, you will be able to use that one. So uh, backup function and backup task is also right as, as I said. So for example, I'm giving some sort of directory where my output will be stored. And I am also giving the steps. Let's say it has one step, which step is takes the vault backup function. So it is the vault backup function. So similarly, we also have a restore function and also a restore task. So one thing, uh, if you are familiar with stash, then this thing should be very much familiar to you. But uh, in terms of vault, there is nothing much different in terms of like one plan. So as I was describing the vault backup and store mechanism, I, I told you about the force, uh, force apply of or force restore of a snapshot from a different vault server. So if you want to do that, you want to pass some sort of flag so that add-ons actually understand that you want to restore a different vault server snapshot to a new vault server. So for that, you will need to pass a force flag to or false by the flag or false by default, it assumes that you are uh, restoring the same vault server for some sort of secret engines. So that's that. You can, of course, uh, edit or to, to work or do whatever you want with the restore function and task according to your needs. That's completely up to you. So we also have our restore task. That's pretty much uh, similar with it. Uh, now about the backup configuration. So what we have done so far, like, so we have set up some sort of repository where we are going to store our snapshots. We have defined some sort of, let's say steps 
uh, uh, by which the backup will be done, by which uh, some steps by which the restore process can be done. Right? So now uh, let's imagine a very simple cron job, like at a certain moment, let's say every five minutes or every five hours or every every day or every month, you want to take a particular snapshot. So how do you define that? So you define that your you define your backup in a backup configuration file. So of course we are using, as I already mentioned, we are using RESTIC driver as stash backup, and I have uh, I'm trying to take a five minute backup uh, at five minute interval. Yeah. So uh, it's a very uh, common uh, backup configuration in terms of stash if you're familiar with stash. And in terms of restore session, so uh, th there is one very minor difference, or I, I found it uh, quite uh, like interesting when I actually started with this one. So backup configuration, you can assume it a uh, cron job. So it will, it will create a backup session, right? Which is one of job. But in terms of restore session, we don't have a restore configuration. We have a one of restore session. So whenever you want to restore something, you don't restore something like every five minutes, right? Or every day. You do it like every once in a while as a one of job. So for that, we don't have any restore configuration stuff. We have a restore session. So using that, we can simply run a restore session or a restore job with your associated parameters, with your targets, which is essentially our ball server here. So we have also provided the app binding of the ball server. And as a rules, we want to get the latest snapshot from here. So th this is all sort of like the knowledge that you actually should have before you want to move forward with the backup and restore process. You should know how how Stash works, uh, what some of the CRTs as a rule stash so then you're just good to go so i think with that uh, we are actually good for our demo so that's probably what you all have been waiting for so let's jump right into it so since we have our ball server we haven't done anything with it so now probably it's time we should do something with that so now uh, what is the first thing that i showed that that we need some sort of repository for our snapshot to store, right? So we don't have a particular repository. We have a repository. Let's check. No, basically we don't have any repository here right now. So basically we want to create a backup repository. So that will hold the information. So backup repository also requires a secret for that backend. I have also created that, that is, uh, yes. So I have created that GCS secret. Uh, this is the secret that we take the repository parameter. So let's create the backup repository. So I have created the backup repository. And whenever, so whenever you install uh, stash add ons uh, using the Helm chart, then associated tasks or functions will also be deployed, right? So I already have my function and task. Uh, I can show that. So we already have here some functions, uh, which is with like a uh, vault restore function. So the function that I've already showed in, uh, in the slide, which is already here. So you can also edit or do whatever you want with it. Uh, I want to, in terms of restoring it, I want to edit it uh, to make the force uh, flag false right now, as it should come there by default as I want to demonstrate uh, the same plus recovery, first of all. And also what do we need, uh, again, we also need a backup function, right? So the task will operate on those functions. So we have a function, so we have a restore function, we also need a backup function. So we also have a backup function, ready? And we also need some tasks. So we have a restore task that I've showed you earlier, and also we have a backup task. So we have our function and task and repository ready. So now what? Now let's uh, simulate some just scenarios. So now before doing that, let's write some data into our ball server. Currently our ball server doesn't have any data. Uh, I haven't tried anything here, no, no. so it's how it was when it came up. So let's uh, enable some secret engines. So let's say I have enabled a secret engine KP. So now if I check out 
the secret engines, I can see that my KV secret engine is enabled. Let's write some data into it. So let's say I have put it a name here. So if I can get that also. So let's say I have this name here in my ball server. It's just a very important name. Name is apps code. So it's my secret data that I have stored in my KV secret engine. Now, if this secret is deleted, there is no way to recover it. So how, what you can do, we can fix the backup snapshot. How that's going to happen, our resource session is going to take that for us. Who is going to create the resource session? A backup configuration is going to create that resource session in a particular time interval. So let's create a backup configuration that I have showed you the YAML for that earlier. So let's do that. So you can see that my backup configuration is ready. So it means it's ready to create my backup session for me, right? So it will take uh, the backup session, create a backup session at every five minutes. Uh, using stash, you can do what, whenever you want. So let's do it now. So let's trigger a backup session. So we can see a backup session is running. So it will try to take the backup snap and it will also try to store it in a remote backend that we had already defined. So let's wait for it. Uh, meanwhile, uh, I don't need any other snapshot. So I think we can simply pause this uh, backup configuration so it will not create any more backup session for me. So I can simply patch the backup configuration here. So let's patch it to true. So it will not create uh, any more backup session for us. <clears throat> so let's wait. Uh, so if everything goes fine, if I haven't anything done at all, then it should be successful. And we should have a snapshot stored in the bucket that I have defined earlier. Looks pretty good. So looks like we have successfully took a snapshot and stored it in our bucket. So we are actually storing the bucket, uh, the backup snapshot in this particular bucket, the stash testing demo call. So if I get into it in our snapshot section, we can see that right now, just now, 59, we have taken a snapshot successfully. So yeah, that looks good. Okay, so now we have successfully taken a snapshot. So that, that, that's, that's pretty easy, right? So yeah. So now, uh, what if some new engineers come up, I have some sort of secret data in my vault and he just deletes it, right? Mercilessly. So let's delete it. So now, for secret list, I can see that my secret engines are there. So I can simply delete it. So if there was any secret engine there in that part, that part is gone. So that part is gone, means gone, totally gone. So we have no data. So if I try to get some data, we don't have even the path where we'll get the data. So it's not there. So now what we can do, we can try to restore that snapshot in the same ball server. Those are from the same ball server, right? That snapshot is from the same ball server and we're trying to restore it in the same ball server. So we need, we don't really need to force fully restore it. We will basically restore that particular uh, ball server, uh, the snapshot in our ball server. So for that, we'll run a one of job which is essentially a restore session, right? That I described earlier. So we'll run a restore session, then it should run successfully. And it should also, after running successfully, it should also uh, bring back all of our values. So let's check that out if that works. So now let me also check the restore session YAML here. Yeah. So restore session YAML is there. So it's using the vault store that we have. It will create our restore session. It will get the latest snapshot. Okay. So let's try to restore that snapshot. So we are, you can see here, we are running our restore session. So it has created a job. Now let's see, let's look for the best. Let's see, let's wait if we can get our important data back in this particular snapshot. So yeah, looks like we have successfully restored it. 
but is it really? Let's check it out. So yeah, let's see uh, what are the secret areas that we have. So yes, we have the KV secret areas that we didn't have earlier. Do we actually have the data? Let's see. So for KV get KV secret. There it is. So we have the data, which is also there. So no matter how much data, how much data is there, it, it, it's as simple as that to run a restore session and all of your data that has been lost will be, will be back again from the restore session. So now um, the other thing that I wanted to demonstrate, the other scenario. So now let's say for some sort of reason, my vault server is completely gone. I have some sort of issues and I have deleted my vault server completely and something bad happened, my vault server is gone. So now what? So since my termination policy was definitely wipe out, right? So I also lose my ANSI keys and root token with, uh, that was associated with this particular vault server, right? So where was my ANSI keys and root token? So my ANSI keys was, and root token was also stored here. So those are also gone. So now I have essentially nothing of this previous vault server besides the snapshot that I had taken earlier. So now if I can successfully restore that in a new vault server, then my data should be back. So now as I don't have any vault server, I should essentially deploy a new vault server and try to restore that snapshot into that vault server. So now uh, I believe we should uh, start deploying a new vault server. So let's deploy a new vault server. So now uh, we have just deployed a different vault server. So it should, uh, once it should be up, then we'll proceed with uh, other stuff, but it should also come up with its own ANSI keys and secret token, which is uh, solely associated with this vault server, no, not other vault servers. So let's check it out, um, what happens next. So now let's wait for the vault server to get ready. So uh, one pod is up. Let's check the vault server status. So our vault server is in critical state. Uh, let's wait until this becomes ready. So uh, as you guys have already seen, right? Like you don't need to have knowledge of a bunch of different stuff. For example, if someone wants to take backup or restore his or her vault server, he must have some sort of knowledge. He must have a pretty good knowledge of how vault works, how different vault backend works, how what are the supports that they provide, and how those backend uh, backup and step mechanism works. But in terms of like stash or key fault, like you have some sort of abstraction, right? In terms of Kubernetes CRD, you are using some sort of some common CRDs and you are getting all the stuffs. So for example, we're doing it for the raft backend. So let's say if we add another backend in terms of console, then you will not need to have that much knowledge on console, how that works. You will simply be able to manipulate some CRDs in terms of stash, for example, backup configuration, restore session, then it will be just good to go. So uh, it's a good thing to have some sort of operator that is the, that much powerful that can do so much thing for you. So since our vault is ready, uh, let's do our other stuff with it. So let's port forward from vault and let's try to get the secret states. Yeah, it says permission denied Why? So we are basically using the old root token. So it's, it's also it's a permission denied, right? So let's export the vault new token that we just generated with this vault server. So now let's take vault secret list. Yeah. So we don't have any other secret list besides the secret list that come up by default. And also we can see that our vault, uh, vault server has come up with a bunch of new set of ANSI keys and root token. Uh, and they have come up just now. So yeah, now I want to, what I want to do, I want to forcefully restore that snapshot from a different vault server into this particular vault server. I have a completely different vault server right now. So for that, I'm just going to edit the restore session in here. Uh, the, the function, the, back, uh, the restore function, because it has that force plan that we need to change. 
is two fraction. So now uh, my vault register function has been edited. So you, so we must have the, the knowledge that we are actually restoring this into a different vault server. We can do it blindly, right? We must have at least that sort of acknowledgement from our own end. So now we have our everything ready. Our vault restore has been updated. Now what we can do, we can essentially create another restore session. I have already created a restore session. Now maybe just uh, edit it and create a different restore session. Let's just uh, to new vault restore session. Let's try to uh, restore that into this particular server. So I have run uh, another restore session. Let's wait until it's completed. Let's see what happens. So it's running. So what it does essentially, since it's coming from a different vault server, it will forcefully restore the snapshot into your vault server. And since this is a different vault server, as I've already mentioned, it will get sealed and all our identity will be changed, right? So it will also internally transform the previous secrets that we had stored with along with our snapshots will be also updated. So it means now all those secret keys have been changed with the secret keys that we had previously. So they have been updated as well. They should be updated. Now, if I want to check if my data has actually been successfully restored, let's run for secret list. I can do that. Why? I already have the uh, root token exported here. Now, the thing that I have been saying for a while now. So we have a particularly different vault server right now that has been restored. So the root token or the unsealed keys associated with this vault server has been completely changed and been overridden by the previous one. So now we need to export the vault server vault token again. It is up to date in our game store. So we can do that from here. So now I should be able to do all the stuff that I actually wanted to do. So I can check my secret list and I can check that my KV secret engine has been successfully restored. Let's check if there is data or not. Yes, so my data has been successfully restored in a completely new wall server from a snapshot that was taken from a different wall server. So this is in terms of for backup and restore for a raft backend, if you think like that, this is very simple. You just need to know about some sort of series and just you are good to go with the rest of your life. So what do you have next? So let's see. Let's see. So that was basically all from the demo site. So now let's do a quick recap on what we have done. So initially, uh, everything regarding Vault actually starts with the deployment of a Vault server. So initially we deployed a Vault server with Cube Vault and we read some data into that fault server in a KV secret engine. We also took a snapshot using Stash. We, we saved that snapshot in a different place away from our cluster, because if that snapshot is gone, then what are we going to restore? Then we re uh, restored the snapshot in the same vault server. And also we had uh, simulated in a different vault server across our different vault. So, and we have showed that we are successfully able to restore data in our vault server. So now, um, if anyone has any question uh, regarding the demo that uh, I had done just now, please feel free to go on the, do we have any question? It seems there have no question yet. So uh, I, I'd like to I would like to thank you, uh, to thank everyone for joining today's webinar. So uh, here is the link uh, of our key vault. So you can follow us on Twitter. You can follow us, uh, you can mail us at hello.com. Also, please visit us at our documentation site, keyfault.com. And also uh, for our GitHub repositories. And also uh, the, the, all the materials that has been used in this webinar will be uploaded in our GitHub repository. You can also follow it from there. And also the recording of this one will also be published in our webinar site. So if you have any chance, uh, visit it again. And if you have any question, feel free to reach us. So thank you.